Hey, welcome back to another historic headstones in Norfolk. We are on the road today in Shaka Hill Cemetery here in Richmond off of Hospital Road. We are doing an Edgar Allan Poe Day, and we are visiting every headstone that had anything to do with Poe. Today, we are at this headstone here. It's, as you can tell, it gets a lot of visitors, and it's for Elmira Royster Shelton. She was the first and last romantic attachment of Poe. She was a probable subject of several of his poems, Born Sarah Royster, she was raised and brought up here in Richmond, Virginia by a well-off family and first met Poe in 1825, almost 200 years ago. We are dealing with a lot of history here. Although in their mid-teens, the pair formed an attachment and were secretly engaged. Elmira's father, however, was quite opposed to the match as he learned that Poe was uh, disinherited by his wealthy stepfather, John Allen, as we talk about in another video. When Poe left Richmond to attend the University of Virginia, Mr. Royster intercepted Poe's letters to her, and um, thinking that Poe had forgotten her, at the age of 17, she married Alexander Shelton, who has become wealthy in the transportation business. So her father intercepted all the letters from Poe from the University of Virginia and made them disappear. She thought that he left her and ditched her and she moved on, which is not the case. All right. Uh, Shelton died in 1844, leaving her with a large inheritance, but with stipulations that she would forfeit most of it if she remarried. By 1848, Poe's child bride, Virginia, had also died, and he called on her while visiting Richmond. She attended some of his lectures and poetry performances, and the two renewed their relationship, despite the resistance of her children and despite the provisions of Mr. Shelton's will. She would only lose the money if she married Poe, which is kind of a, you know, kind of a messed up situation, but that's the way it was back then. She was a religious lady who would never take up, a, take up with a great writer a second time had she not known that his reputation as a drinker, he was a heavy drinker and he was a heavy gambler. Though it is equally certain that she had to have been unaware of the uh, stipulations of romance. She did not know about the romancing of Sarah Whitman in Rhode Island. She had no clue about that. When Poe left Richmond on September 27th, 1849, he was expecting to return soon for his marriage to her, but he was to die in Baltimore on October 7th, as we all know he's buried up there, under circumstances that remain mysterious. We still have no clue why he died. She never remarried, and for many years the night that she was ever engaged to Poe, Although she was submit everything to Poe's doctor, Dr. Jo uh, Dr. John Joseph Maron, in June 1884. Historians sometimes question the doctor's account, although general consensus that he tended to magnify his own parts and events, and he never actually lied. The truth, however, had been generally known, and she was commonly called Poe's Lenore. Now, you remember all this stuff he wrote about Lenore, it was about her sometimes even to her face in Richmond for the rest of her life and her obituary in Richmond wig referred to her as Poe's first and last love just which of many how many ladies did he know over the years he addressed his poetry as a matter of controversy among scholars but by general agreement several other poems including song and the 1827 Tamburlaine and other poems Poe's first published work are about her Many authorities contended that she was the lost Lenore opposed 1845 Magnus Opus, The Raven, and Annabelle Lee of the 1849 published work of that name. She, uh, of that name. So, she is the inspiration for Raven and also Annabelle Lee. That's all about her. And I know he published other poems about her too. This is the first and last love of Poe. Um, and that was over 200 years ago. It's just amazing how much history is here in Richmond. But if you ever want to come visit her, she is in the right almost against Hospital uh, Hospital Road on the north side of the cemetery. As you can see, there's a hospital there, the Civil War Hospital. And she's got a tabletop uh, headstone or tomb. And it's really neat. You can see all the people leaving rocks on there. I've left, I've left a rock on here before too. So there's a lot of visitors here. All right, guys, take care and have a great day.